just rush to touch on these areas because we're discussing the anointing why do we need the anointing it's important for us to understand why we need the anointing why does the believer need the anointing number one to subdue the forces of darkness fighting against our destinies and the advancement of the kingdom why do we need the anointing that engracing of the spirit to subdue the forces of darkness that war against our destinies and against the advancement of the kingdom psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto god it says how terrible art thou in your ways psalm 66 and verse 3 through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you not through your being alive not through your being a preacher scripture did not leave us in the dark ladies and gentlemen as to the fact that the whole world lies in wickedness it is true an uncomfortable truth but it is true that our world is a wicked place there are spirits that predates the existence of men in fraternity with men to destroy destinies and to sabotage ultimately the purposes of God and it takes the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit to subdue them Isaiah 10 and verse 27 it says it shall come to pass on that day please give it to us it shall come to pass on that day Isaiah chapter 10 27 that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulder if it is taken away god did not put it there it says and the yoke from off your neck if you have both a yoke and a burden upon you already that will impede your advancement and it says it shall be destroyed because of the anointing there are yokes that sit upon the lives and the destinies of people when jesus came making his own manifesto in luke chapter 4 we make reference to that also in isaiah chapter 61 the messianic prophecy please give it to us let's read the first four verses isaiah 61 the spirit of the lord god he says is upon me because the lord hath anointed me for these number one to preach good tidings to the poor it takes the anointing to preach good tidings to the poor it takes more than sympathy it takes more than empathy it takes the anointing of the spirit number two he had sent me authorized me by the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted kjv please and then number three to proclaim liberty it says thank you to the captives you don't proclaim liberty just because you have a voice be free no that when you announce that there is an anointing that can break every yoke and set the captives free to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison my goodness my god that means there are human beings who are walking bishop on earth moving physically yet in the realm of the spirit there are doors and prisons locking them there are families sincere people they can travel to the u.s come back travel to the um, uk come back go all around the world have all their education or whatever it is but according to the revelation of scripture they are locked up in prison houses waiting for the anointing to open that door can i tell you this time does not open the door it's the anointing that opens it you can be in that prison door give birth to your children in that prison give birth to your grandchildren in that prison but i come in the name of jesus this morning by the grace and the power of the holy spirit that everyone here shalika paruthiata every family locked up and chained in all kinds of prisons in the name of jesus listening and following online from whatever nation and here in asaba i declare by the spirit of god for that door that has been closed Efata, be open now. 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 Please sit down. 
it is because the prison door is closed that's why you can be looking at your destiny helper he's close to you yet you don't know there is a divide between you and him he can bless and help everybody around you and say come back please be sensitive this morning we came for very serious business give us back that scripture please verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn these are the things the anointing does to appoint unto them that mourn I like this do you know what this means set a date for their deliverance hmm. it doesn't mean announce set a date you can call their deliverance today and it will happen to appoint unto them that morning Zion he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for what the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified in their lives verse 3 verse okay verse 4 now and they shall build the old wastes so it takes the anointing that what my father could not do i once heard that there was greatness in this family i once heard that we were great people that this family had men and women of god men of fire that when the missionaries came this was the family that supported them but right now there is almost no one who believes in god in this family it says to build back the old ways to say no way we must get back to the spiritual heritage there are many of you you go back to the archives in your family and you find out that your grandparents were part of the cutting edge activity of the spirit but as it is now there is almost no one aside from you that calls upon the name of the Lord to build back the old waste it says they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the waste cities the desolations of many generations all by the anointing all by the anointing so we need the anointing to subdue the forces of darkness that fight against our destinies and against the kingdom of God. Look up please, let me tell you this. If the average believer is ever aware at the schemings of darkness over your life, that alone will motivate you to take God seriously. I think that because of, now, I don't mean to insult technology and our you know secular living i have profound respect for it but i think most believers have been blinded at the reality if a legion of demons were in one man one there are only about maybe six to eight billion people as we know today now on earth roughly speaking that is child's play relative to the number of demons and spiritual forces that are on earth that is what child's play That means there are enough spirits to be assigned per destiny. Satan has not hidden his hatred for anything God, including you. So when you stood to give your life to Christ, you are not the only one that witnessed your salvation. The gates of darkness saw this. So finally, this family now has one person who has stood to say I am for Jesus and not only me when you were praying with your wife and saying as for me and my house we will serve the Lord it was not only you in that room and it was not angels alone the realm of the spirit was watching your prayer and they were hearing your confession and they said alright you have drawn the line and we walk carelessly just believing that in some way my life I will excel just like that when jesus finished fasting the first person he saw was not an angel the first person he saw was satan satan left the whole world and was waiting patiently for 40 days there are some fastings that don't just drive demons it makes them to say what is happening in asaba we, we there is a signal an unusual angelic activities happening somewhere in asaba who is that person burning the incense 
of prayer. It's not everything that just drives demons. There are things that call them. Your giving, your sacrifice. The realm of the spirit is responding. And they want to come and find out who is this. And they say it's a pastor. Pastor? They check the archives in the spirit. We've not had the mention of pastor in this family. Where is this coming from? It's coming from a young man who has covenanted with God that he will be a liberator of his family. And he says, draw the line. Whatever it will take, whether it's an accident, whether it's a destruction, he said, whatever it will, to, to, you know, all those kinds of things. And then scheme it to destroy him. Ah! But in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, I say it again, that every force sitting on anyone's destiny, I'm not motivating you. I stand by the God who called me. And I declare in the name of Jesus that their power is broken over your life. Broken over, help them please. Help that lady. Broken over your family. Please help them. In the name of Jesus, I set on fire everything that is not of the Christ. I destroy every yoke. I stand by the God of heaven. And through the voice of prophecy, I arrest every spirit. I arrest every ordinance speaking against you. Please sit down. Hila sala parusa siya katabaranda katosia. Shkatabala katosiata. Just pray in the spirit in one minute where you are seated. Shkatabarata side bala hasabia. Mm, fire is burning in this place enough is enough it's time for destinies to shift it's time for lives to change it's time for that which was spoken concerning your life man of god are you praying enough is enough it's time to see the power the grace and the glory of god it's time for that which was written concerning me to speak are they men of prayer in Asaba? Shatata katali kata Ebrata katosh kabarata Shagatez kabarakata bakata Shibedekata lakata ba Shkabarata bakatosh yata Embrates kopoto koto barete kete hallelujah in the name of jesus please sit down and be sensitive please give me volume elijah number two why do you need the anointing mm. to fulfill your divine assignment And advance the kingdom of God the second reason why you need the anointing is to fulfill your divine assignment hear me thank God for skill thank God for your abilities thank God for your human potentials but in this kingdom human potentials can only take us so far you cannot do kingdom assignments ultimately in the strength of the flesh you will need an empowerment from heaven are we blessed yes you cannot heal the sick set the captives free fulfill your god-given assignment just using the force of intellect just using the force of secular knowledge thank god for your education thank god for your exposure but in all you're getting get authentic spiritual power why do we need the anointing only the anointing can produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction 
only the anointing can produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction your ability cannot produce God's dimension of results to his satisfaction only the anointing I can tell you this with all humility in my little work with God and in ministry not to brag forgive me if I sound arrogant but I have seen wonders in the lives of people I have seen God do things that are all inspiring and I go back and I know the difference between me and the anointing I can disconnect myself from that result and I know this one you have nothing to do with it the sea did not part for Elijah the sea parted for whoever carried that mantle it was not about Elijah it was about the career of that mantle when Elisha carried it and came and said where is the Lord God of Elijah Are you blessed this morning? Yes sir. yes, sir. Hear me. God wants to give you rest. There are many of us, you are sincere people, but I bring you to a dimension where you stop doing things in the flesh. You are doing business in the flesh. You will be angry and you will hate successful people for the rest of your life because you will try to attract customers and even your own tribes people will leave you it is whoever access an advantage from the realm of the spirit who exerts dominion here great men and women of god it takes more than a good bible study to have god honor you and increase you and have people come to listen to the counsel of God upon your lips and to have a generation honor and acknowledge the workings of God upon you. It takes more than that. There is a dimension of grace. An angel of the Lord is pouring oil on this lady. This lady with hands on her mouth. I'm seeing oil. And the Lord is saying he's shifting you to a new dimension in the spirit. I stretch my hands now. You step into that dimension in the spirit. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set my heart on you so you do what you do we need this season we need this season 